I think uh, you see it, uh, the Q2 results are in line with the pre-announcements. But if you step back a little bit and you look at for the first six months, I think uh, we are growing at 5%. We have a strong margin of more than 30%. And the EPS uh, is growing at 10%. So I think we are still on plan for, for, the, for the year. The cautiousness is coming specifically from the aerospace and defense sector, where you know, many of our customers, they face some delays due to the bottleneck in the supply chain. And obviously, this has an impact on the cash flow. Nevertheless, I think we are the solution to this problem, not the problem. Pascal, um, when you say aerospace and defense, of course, it covers a vast array of, of clients as well, from the purely commercial players to the military players as well. How, how systemic are the bottlenecks, the supply delays, or actually is it very, very specific? And as you say, you think the solutions are in place. Could you just expand upon that for us? Yes. So I think the, there are two different topics. On the commercial side, uh, really the problem is coming from the supply chains, and you have a lot of disruptions going on. Uh, you take whatever Boeing Airbus, they have a huge backlog, and they still have our time to produce at the right cadence. For the difference and space, it's a little bit different. I think this uncertainty on the political environment is creating some delays. People are expecting to have more clarity on what is going on before to engage new budgets. That's probably the big difference between the two. Uh, Pascal, good morning to you. But I mean, the, the geopolitical landscape has certainly been uncertain or maybe worrisome uh, for, for quite some time. Why is this something that's only being flagged now? Well, I think the, the topic is coming specifically from the U.S. Uh, you know, a few weeks ago, we had no visibility, not at least not the same visibility on potentially who could win the elections. Now the game is starting again. So that's where, to a certain extent, the uncertainty was coming from. Yeah, and, and does that mean then that a, a possible Trump presidency um, was the big concern and that a lot of customers would rethink uh, the way they buy into the defense and aero systems play? We know that between the two candidates, you have different positions on the defense. I mean, they, are, uh, they do not have the same view of the geopolitics. And I think uh, for big projects going on, they wanted to have more clarity before to engage to the next phase. Pascal, let me just uh, have a look on this side of the Atlantic. Of course, you'll be far aware, more aware than I am of, of the... The political maelstrom at the top of French politics, it's been a, a rocky road for European politics more generally as well. Do you think any of that is feeding into what you called back on the 9th of July the large transaction delays, or is it purely about those supply problems you mentioned? No, no, no. You also have this uh, political environment, you are right, in Europe, and more precisely in France and Germany, where... You know, after the European elections, uh, people start to question uh, where the countries and the politics are going on, and we have certain projects which are dependent on public funding. So these, again, are creating some delays in the decisions. The good news of this, none of those deals are lost. They are still in our pipeline, and we do expect to close them between now and uh, the rest of the year. So I think uh, that's the reason why we are pretty confident on the H2 backlog. 